This is lesson six, the atmosphere and health. And the first thing we're going to talk about is the Clean Air Act. Now, the Clean Air Act is kind of a success story, and that's why we, we start with this. By the 1970s, many cities lived in smog from car exhaust, and acid rain was a growing problem. Smog, this is what smog looks like. People who live in smog, it's like they're in a fog, except it's not made of water. It's not like a cloud. It's more like pollution. It's, it's, like, it's like living in smoke or whatever. Okay? Here's a picture of a smoggy city. Okay? Now you'll notice most of these pictures are, are from China and we'll see why in your homework how that's affecting people's health. Okay, so back to the notes. In 1970 the Clean Air Act was passed and had successfully reduced the amount of pollution that is in the air. So 1970 we passed the Clean Air Act. Soon we're going to see how exactly that has changed the amount of pollution we breathe in every day. Okay. But first we're going to talk about acid rain. Okay. By the 70s we had smog and acid rain and these two problems go hand in hand. So acid rain is caused by sulfur dioxide which is released when coal is burned. Okay. In short, SO2 plus rain is equal to acid rain. Now acid rain is not a strong acid. It's not like going to melt your face or anything, but it's enough to kill plants. It's enough to kill aquatic ecosystems and all of those other things that are going on. And that's what we say here in the notes. Acid rain damages plants and aquatic life. Okay. Now the acid rain problem, it was serious. Okay. Here's what the acid rain, if we were mapping it out in 1970, here's kind of the, the scope of the problem over here. Ohio is kind of dead center in there. Illinois, getting into uh, Indiana, all these, all these states right here have a problem. Well, the Clean Air Act at this point, 10 years later, in 1980, this is what we have going on. Marginally better. By 1990, you can see some spots have gotten worse again, some spots have gotten better. By 2000, it's clearly better yet. And by 2010, you can see there are still spots where this is a problem. But, you could say it's still a problem, but it's gotten somewhat better. Okay. Results of the Clean Air Act. Just like we saw up here with the acid rain graphing, the results of the Clean Air Act led to a drop in all of these different types of pollutants that we're breathing. Okay, so lead went way down, carbon monoxide, sulfur dioxide, nitrous dioxide from, to, from 1980 to 2008. The air we are breathing is cleaner just because we're, we're not polluting these things quite so much. So in short, pollution has been reduced due to the Clean Air Act. Now on to the next page. We are going to go over what the effects of these pollutants are. Okay? It's just good to have an idea of why it is we don't want to breathe these things in. First of all, pollutants such as nitrous dioxide, sulfur dioxide, carbon monoxide, lead, and others, they mostly affect babies and infants. Right? And in those babies and infants, we end up seeing they cause chronic problems like asthma at a larger rate. Where is pollution doing the most harm? Now, of course, there's pollution out here in the West Coast, but the graph I found was, was based on where the pollution is in um, the eastern part of the country, because that included us. And it's in the area called the Rust Belt. Okay. What you see here, colored here, is, is basically the Rust Belt. Okay. Now, the last little bit, the effects of air pollution on human health. Here are the pollutants. We're going to go through the source of these pollutants. So where does carbon monoxide come from? And the effect carbon monoxide has on human health. Carbon monoxide comes from the burning of fossil fuels in all different sorts. You know, power plants or cars or furnaces in your house make carbon monoxide. 
the effect it'll have on your health, it reduces your ability of blood to deliver oxygen to your cells. So that's why you need a carbon monoxide detector in your house, because you have a furnace that produces a lot of it, probably. And if that furnace starts leaking, you, you want a detector to detect it because a lot of people end up falling asleep and end up dying because they just starve for oxygen in that carbon monoxide. Nitrogen dioxide, also caused by burning fossil fuels, causes breathing problems and lung damage. Ozone, we learned about yesterday, it's caused by a uh, chemical reaction with certain, certain carbon compounds, but it'll cause breathing problems, asthma, and eye irritation in people that have it more often. Ozone's a bigger problem in places that have smog and other stuff, but we breathe ozone every breath. It's just how much that is the problem. Particles of smoke, dust, smoke, and soot are caused by the burning of wood and fossil fuels, volcanic eruptions. They result in respiratory illness, nose and throat irritation. And lastly, sulfur dioxide was the burning of fossil fuels, volcanic eruptions, and results in breathing problems and lung damage. So I don't need you to memorize all of these things, but you should know. You should notice that most of these are burning of fossil fuels, and they both mostly end up affecting your lungs the worst.